Hello! Welcome to this YouTube channel. My name is Veronica. I'm a digital influencer from Brazil and I was invited to this channel to teach you how to create amazing 3D outfits. Yes, we're gonna teach you how to create 3D outfits step by step in the easiest way as possible. So if you are a designer, a 3D designer, a fashion designer, or even a pattern maker, and you are in love with the fashion and everything about it, you are at the right place. So just subscribe to this channel so you're not gonna miss all of our classes. We're gonna try to keep a step-by-step -step method so you can uh, catch it in the fastest way as possible, okay? So today, for our first class, we're gonna start with the most beloved item of this this year. We've been seeing this a lot in the magazines, uh, in the catwalks, and it's all about the puffer jacket. It's just the like this one that I'm wearing, but not so much like this. It's much more like this uh, one that I'm having right here. So we're gonna develop um, puffer jackets with the most realistic details as possible. So let's begin, shall we? Okay. Okay, so I have this amazing body. It's a super duper body, <laughs> but that's the body we're gonna use. It's the body that I use for Veronica in Dastry D. She's a little bit too much, but <laughs> we're gonna use her body to start building this puffer jacket. And right here, on um, my left side, I have a library here of some garments. This is not actually the computer that I use for building, for working with 3D garments, so I don't have uh, so many items here. But when you download Glow 3D for the first time, uh, the items that you got is a, a, it's mostly a T-shirt. So they're not here just uh, for you to give it a try, but you could use it as a base to, beauty, to build any item you would like to. And also we have this modular configurator right here at the corner that we have many other garments ready to use. So you could use them freely, uh, but we're gonna start with this t-shirt as a base for our puffer jacket. Okay, so um, the first step is to import your pattern. So if you already have a pattern, you could just come here to file and import. Um, it could be an AI, AI PDF or a DXF if you ha if you if it comes from a pattern maker software. Okay. So, um, but we're gonna use this T-shirt. I'm gonna add it to workspace. So right click and select add to workspace. So it comes like this and I could just start moving with the gizmo to make it fit right. Uh, or I could use this uh, arrangement points to make it fit better. Like I could select the sleeves and click on a point so it would just fit better on the model. Um, I could just move it back a bit to not start clipping on her body because she has a lot of curves and I could just press simulate right so in this moment she um, this t-shirt is fitting pretty well I'm not gonna adjust it because jackets are supposed to be a little bit more loose and I'm gonna start deleting some things like the sleeves I'm not gonna need this I'm not gonna need the color and right here we're gonna go to the next step that is starting to model this item and uh, the puffer jacket is not such a difficult item to make right here we have um, the front and the back and we have a line in the middle this means that this pattern has symmetry applied to it so if I click here and bring it down you can see that the the other side is gonna move as well but when I do this, when I just with the with the set of my keyboard or even clicking here, I can select this tool that is called Edit Pattern. And when I click here and I give it a cut, my pattern
pattern is still going to be symmetric, but we're going to have this blue line around it that's going to say um, the symmetry is applied to it. Okay, so we didn't miss that. And uh, once I have this front split it, if I simulate it, it will open. There's no problem with that at this point. It's just not going to change anything for me. I'm just going to convert this point to a curve point. Just right click on it and select convert to curve point. So I could adjust this sleeve a little better. Usually this dot here is just for you to connect the sleeves in a more precise way. Uh, we have a dart here. A dart? No, uh, it's not a dart. It's a notch. Sorry. <laughs> So we have a notch here that could just uh, help the, the person that is sewing this, this sleeve how to find uh, the right point to, to, to connect, you know, to close the sleeves more precisely. So I'm going to make the, the sleeves, the sleeves that's the same of the image before. I'm going to click here and press so we can see more of it. We have a rectangle here that, that is the S of my keyboard. So I'm going to make a rectangle, but first I should take the measure of her arms here. Surface circumference or basic circumference, whatever it is. I just need to know her arm width. That is around 27. So I'm going to make it um, 29. I'm going to make it 2 centimeters wider. So the width is 29. And the high is, I'm going to make it a 4. I mean, no, sorry. I'm going to make it a 10. So I'm going to press OK. If I want to make it up the to show up the um, the arrangement points, I could just press Shift F, so they would show up, okay, more easily. And uh, before that, I want to create a symmetric a symmetric sleeve for this. So this is the one that I'm making right now. So I'm gonna make another one. Right click over it and go to symmetric pattern and it's over there. So if I have a symmetric pattern, when I just select my sleeve like this here, when I select it and put it over this arrangement point, it already positions the opposite one. So it's easier when you have symmetry applied to your patterns, okay? And before we simulate it, we need to sew this to the body of this jacket. So I'm gonna split the sleeve because I want part of it hanging so uh, uh, a small part of it's gonna be sewed in here uh, and the other part's gonna be hanging so I could move my arm easily okay so I'm gonna split it in half so split um, and select uniform split so I have two segments with the same distance and let's do this right here. I could go just. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm selecting the free sewing tool, okay. And sometimes it's faster when I do, so I forget to explain it to you. So here, I have the free sewing tool. That is the M in your keyboard. So if you press N, M, you you're gonna select it. So I'm gonna start from down. So this blue dot tells me where to go. So I stop right here. And same thing on the other side. I'm gonna split it. And the middle, uniform split. And start sewing right here at the other side of the, the blouse. So you can see that here, I have it already uh, sewed to the body of this jacket. And this other part, I'm gonna sew uh, with right here. So I press N from my keyboard. That is this segment sewing tool, and I'm just gonna sew that it with itself. And the symmetric, it's already done. 
so I don't have to do it twice. Easy. So now I can simulate it and it's beautiful, right? I could make it a bit looser if I want, but this is not the moment. Let's see with the buff how it goes. Um, and then we're gonna start um, start building this. So we're gonna go to step three, where we're gonna start uh, building the jacket. Now uh, we're finished with modeling. We're gonna start giving shape to it. So I'm gonna press Z and uh, with my right click, and I'm gonna press select this option, offset as internal line. Okay, so I've already done this before, so uh, I'm gonna leave as it is 14, 14, and four centimeters wide. So we've done it in the back and I'm in the front, so we're gonna do it in the back. And in the back, I'm gonna increase to 15, okay? And right here, uh, I'm gonna make just one line in the middle. I could do it many ways, but I like to use this tool. When I select this line, we, uh, press shift and select the other. Press right button and use this option, distribute internal line between segments because uh, it distributes in a y uniform way. So I like to use this tool a lot. So I already have my internal lines and the reason why I've done this before is because of that. See, um, I'm gonna select all the patterns with this first tool that is the transform pattern tool and I'm gonna right click, oops, <laughs> select it, right click and give a layer clone over. See, this is beautiful. So what we're doing here is we're cloning this pattern over the other so if I click here you could see that I have another pattern over and the most beautiful part of it is that it's all sewn so I don't have to sew each internal line one by one they are already sewn so it's beautiful it's beautiful um, you could see it better here so you could see that we have different patterns and uh, if I simulate, nothing will happen at first because the magic hasn't happened. <laughs> so right now, uh, with all the patterns selected again, all not all the patterns, but all the upper patterns, I'm gonna go here and start to inflate this uh, jacket. So it's right here in the property editor too. We have the pressure function. So to the upper part, to the upper patterns, I'm gonna just give it a 30 maybe. And if I simulate, see, the jacket tries to fly away. So uh, what we have to do is before activating simulation, we're gonna select the upper patterns and give it a 30 pressure. And to the lower ones, we're gonna give it a minus 30 pressure. And the jacket's gonna get a sh beautiful shape like this. See, we already have this filling happening here. And um, let me check the sleeves if they are good as well. And uh, to get a, a nicer result, we're gonna start giving the details to this jacket. So we're gonna go to step four, where we start making the details. I forgot that I didn't make a um, a color to this jacket, but I could do this um, right now, no problem with it. Um, let me get just the measures. So we have a 43 centimeter length of this um, of this color, so I'm gonna make it here. 43 and the height is, so I'm gonna make it a 4, maybe a 5 so um, bring the I'll bring the arrangement points to make it easier to fit. I could just bring it here. 
So here, uh, like I've seen before, I have uh, different ways of showing the fabric. So if if I choose this one, this texture surface fabric, it's going to tell me where is the opposite side of the fabric, the, the side that shouldn't be up. So I can see that it's well organized here. And I usually like to work with this thick texture surface. That's where uh, it shows the, the more precise thickness of the fabric so I can understand where some volume should be applied to a specific type of fabric okay and then I'm gonna start sewing so to start sewing with it I have many uh, parts here to be connected uh, the first thing I'm gonna click here so I understand uh, which side is gonna be connected with so I can see a blue dot here and I understand that this side starts right here and it's gonna go all the way around so I'm gonna use the free sewing tool I'm gonna start with the bigger part that is the, um, the color and I'm gonna start with the front here press shift and do not lose um, do not lose it just keep it pressed and go all the way around and then you can release shift button and it's all sewn so it's easy and I can simulate just to see it how it goes um, to me it's way too much open but since I've done all the internal lines here I'm not gonna change it right now but I should have done that, that before <laughs> but this will do for now and I'm gonna give a layer clone over for this as well so, oops, um, I could start giving some puff to it, so this is the over one and I'm gonna make it at 30 and for the other one minus 30 and I can simulate it, I could see a little bit of volume here, yes. So there is a problem here when I give a layer clone over uh, with the sewing when I click here with the sewing tool over it I can see it is turned so since the sewing is turned I don't have a lot of filling here it keeps this corner very rigid so what I could do is change it into custom angle and when I simulate it I can see it, it goes more flat and I could even make it a bit stronger like this um, I could just increase the strength of the fold just to see it a bit more round you see we're starting to see a little bit more round here so this is something you could do at the edges like right here for example as well I could just turn it to custom angle increase the strength and simulate it so we could have more rounded edges so here it's not so puffy because it seems a little bit tight let me check it's a bit tight so it doesn't have a lot of space to grow I could just increase um, increase the puff let's see this is the under one so I'm gonna bring it down I like to organize my tree my 2d area so it's more clear and easier to to find everything and even to select it so I'm gonna select the upper part and make it a little bit stronger like this 70 and this minus 70 okay so you see there is much more puff here but it's not so visible uh, in the way that I like that I would like to see it uh, I want more details I want those uh, ruffles right here so you could tell me that that's what happens when the real cloth folds and um, it's under pressure right so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the particle distance so be careful right now if you don't have a very much powerful computer uh, this might uh, get slower and crash so just be careful what I recommend you to do is 
change everything first, uh, all the details first, and then simulate later so you can wait and see the results. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower it to 5. I could work even with a 2, a particle distance of 2 here, just to see more wrinkles, that's what I love. But uh, in the first moment we're going to work with 5, it's just fine. And what we're going to do is, we're going to select this upper part, but uh, disclaimer here, if you are from the fashion industry, you shouldn't do this. This, uh, this tool that I'm going to use right now, it's used mostly uh, it's used mostly to tell you when, when a fabric shrinks after being cut. So uh, how much is the, um, the shrinkage average of this fabric? You're going to use this tool just to make it uh, shrink a bit. And if you are a gamer or just want to make it for a static product, you could use it freely. It's a shrinkage too, so you could increase or decrease the fabric expand. So the fabric will expand or shrink uh, according to the number you put here. So uh, if you are from the fashion industry and you are developing patterns, you should increase this pattern and not use this tool that I'm going to use right now. Okay. Uh, but since we're teaching everybody here, this is a nice thing to know. I'm going to give it 110% of shrinkage on the weft. So the weft, it's uh, um, right here. Let me, let me show you. So we have this texture tool here that shows you the, the, the grain line of the fabric. So if you have uh, this tool like here so you are working on the warp and the weft so if I change like this I'm changing the grain line of the fabric to um, to a different direction so the fabric might have a different um, a different fit a different falling so uh, I usually work like this with my patterns because most of the patterns are cut respecting the grain line of the fabric. That would be the warp. Okay. So, uh, let me just do a control Z. Okay. So now that we've done this, just let's check this out and see what happens. So I'm going to start simulating it. You can see that the lower pattern is not changed. So I can start simulation and see what happens. So you see all those beautiful wrinkles right here? I love it and I think the, mo the more the merrier. <laughs> so I could uh, just increase a bit more to give it more details to this pattern. But it's already beautiful. I could just add a color here. You know, just let add a color. Beautiful color. And uh, the color is using a different fabric, so I'm going to change it. Just going to select this color and select this to apply the right fabric, so they're all the same. And the sleeves as well. Why is that? All right, so it's already beautiful. I'm loving it. I could just make uh, on each um, pattern separately, but I could select all of them and give it a bit more, let's see, 120, if it's not too much. And it's beautiful. Look at this. Lovely, right? So, uh, right now you could just add a zipper right here, so we could use the zipper tool and start adding zippers, so we could have beautiful... I would uh, increase a bit more of this color, if I may. <laughs> I would just make it a bit higher, because I love the fact that it has been bigger. So if I want to increase it, um, like this, 
I could just move it freely or just make it more precise like this uh, with the, the Z to select that is the edit pattern tool. I could just click over this line, drag and uh, still holding the, the left button I will right click so I could just type the the exactly measure that I want to move it. So if I want two centimeters up, I just type two and it's gonna move exactly two centimeters up. So since the, the other pattern is symmetric, we're gonna move to both of them. So both of them are the same width. So I could just uh, simulate. <clears throat> And we might uh, we might have some collision here since the particle distance is lower. Uh, the fabric might find some difficult to to settle because we already had um, lower the particle distance. When it's bigger, uh, it's not that much difficult. But it there it is. It's beautiful. I could make it a little bit less buffy. Just the um, just the. Um, Let's see, if I put it at 30, back. So here I have a 30 and here I might have minus 30. Let's see. All right. And then we're gonna start applying the zipper. I could make it just, uh, um, crop it jacket it would look beautiful as well I could just use one of these internal lines to cut it and make it a crop it it would look great as well very modern but let's leave it as it is and uh, start applying zipper so to start applying the zipper I have this zipper too and I'm gonna select right here and I could go all the way down here uh, using my 3D area or I could go all the way down in my 2D area as well. There is no problem with that. You could just finish here, double click and just start right here in my 3D area. Uh, let me close this so we could see it a bit better. And just then start right here and finish. Um, sometimes it doesn't work so well. Let's be redo it. And go all the way down, double click it and just wait so we have this zipper already and then we could just close it if you want or you could just keep it open to make it open you could just come to fasten zipper on and off just toggle this off and um, you're gonna have this open so it's already settled and uh, it's been it's a little bit tight here right now if I turn this map on I can see it's a little bit tight on the brass so I can I cannot see those uh, ruffles right here so I could just make it a bit wider so it would look uh, nicer but you already know how to do it so you could try it by yourself at home and just let me know if you like this tip so right now it's the moment when you finish doing it, you could start just applying sewing lines, for example, you could just come right here and start applying top stitches. Mm. You could apply top stitches all in, uh, in all of those internal lines, but uh, if, you're, if you're not willing to do it, because if you think it's not gonna make a difference for you, you could just render it and check it out. So I come right here, render and select render. So we will have this window and I have to turn off simulation. That's something I often forget to do. <laughs> so you can just uh, start rendering it. 
and let's see how it goes. All right, and here is how it turned out. I've decided to make it a cropped top, added a tank top below, and uh, some hanging trims. So you could see, I've also recorded an animation right here, so you could see how it would uh, work with an animation. And uh, let's check. See? Very nice final results, right? Did you like it? So this was our first class together. I really hope you enjoyed our step-by-step -step method. And if you want to learn something different, do leave us a comment. What would you like to see next? And also subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of the new lessons we're going to bring here. I really hope you enjoyed and it was a pleasure to meet you. Bye-bye.